Hey y'all, so I am super excited. Next week I will be going to the Wilds Christian Camp. So I just want a heads up, I will not be posting a video next Monday. I will be posting it Sunday night after church, Sunday night. So if you're expecting it Monday, it will be done Sunday. So just watch out for that because I'm going to be leaving really early Monday. So I won't have time to post a video on Monday. But it will be up Sunday night after church. So as kind of a throwback to last year when I went to camp and I started this whole thing. Um, if you watched the first devotional, Why We Glow, it was really long. But if you watched it, you kind of got an overview of what everything was about. Well, I just want to touch on that stuff again because that whole week at camp it changed me. I got saved when I was five years old, but I didn't live like it. Like, I didn't live like a Christian. I lived like all my friends who weren't saved. They would do stuff that I knew was wrong, that I knew was sinful, that I knew was against God's will, but I did it, and I, I didn't think twice about it. I just kept doing it. And then when I went to camp, I realized, hey, all this stuff is wrong. I need to be living for God. How can I witness to people? How can I be a light to other people to tell them about Jesus Christ when I'm not living differently than them? They would say, hey, um, why do I need to live differently than her? Why do I need Jesus Christ? Why do I need the Lord when she says that she's saved, but she doesn't act any different than I do? So what does she have? that I need. I mean, we're, we act the same. So, I was surprised, shocked. I, The Lord really dealt with me last year, and I'm so excited to see what He's going to do with me this year. But I would like to read some of the verses that they talked about, and kind of our theme verses for this whole organization type thing. And also my favorite verse in the entire Bible, which after last year kind of became my life verse. So I'm going to read Matthew 5, 14 through 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto the whole house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That series of verses right there is like a perfect illustration of how Jesus Christ should shine through you, should glow through you. If you read the, if you watched the first devotional, you know Rachel Joy Scott. Um, she gave her life. She was a martyr. She died for Jesus Christ. Um, she was living in sin, and some of her old friends who when she got converted to Christianity when she turned her life over to Jesus Christ she left those friends behind she witnessed to them and but she didn't hang out with them anymore because she didn't want the bad apple to make her bad also so she kind of distanced herself and those friends came back one day with a gun at school while she was witnessing and said hey Rachel Joy Scott do you still believe in Jesus Christ do you still believe that he's your savior? And she was like, you know I do. And they shot her. And that whole series, like what she did, I admire her. I admire her stand for Jesus Christ. If I were put in a position that I could die for, him, for the Lord, I hope that I would be firm enough in my beliefs to say, yeah, of course I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to deny him. I'm not going to denounce the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died for me. So I hope that you'll remember that you're a light. You're supposed to shine to other people. Let the Lord Jesus Christ shine through you. Don't just try to hide it under a bushel. If you light a candle, you're not going to put it under a bushel to die out. When you got saved, you lit the candle. Now let it shine. Let it shine and let it shine. Come back next week and um, remember, Sunday night, not Monday. Sunday night. Bye!